Cordell over here and playing our piano. We're proud of her. We love her. We appreciate her. And we're thankful for all that she does for the church in every way. Just a great lady, Sister Susie uh, Keeney. We love her and appreciate her. Uh, we miss her. Uh, Brother J.D. Armstrong, we miss him. Uh, give a shout out to Brother Jamie. Shout out to Brother T.J. Turner. Amen. Carson uh, Conkle, uh, Kelsey Conkle, Keith Conkle, and my wife and myself. We love you all very much. And we are so proud that you're a part of the church. We want to remember Sister Yvonne Berry, uh, also a very important part of our church here in Marmette. We love and appreciate uh, Sister Barry, and uh, she's one of our new converts. God bless Sister Yvonne. Amen. Well, it's great to be here today, and we're thankful to get into the Word of God. I want to uh, talk to you a little bit today about helplessness. Sometimes we feel a little helpless in our lives, and right now, I don't know about you, but uh, many people are feeling a little bit helpless. We feel like that uh, we're under the gun. We feel like uh, the government has its thumb on us in one way, and in another way, it's just the coronavirus. Uh, but still, uh, we feel like that we're being pushed down. We feel like that we're uh, unable to assemble. It makes it difficult. It's not because we couldn't assemble. It's because it's not really safe to assemble. And um, Brother Conkle is the type of person that when I'm out in a snowstorm and the snow's getting bad, the roads are getting bad, I've got a long ways to drive, I make sure I'm going a lot slower than everybody else. The reason I do that is so that if I'm going slower than them and people are passing me and they seem to be navigating the road, swerving in and out and around, uh, then I know that I'm going to be just fine. Uh, but uh, those that are going faster uh, than they probably should, uh, you'll find that they'll be slipping off the road, hitting bridges, uh, going into ditches, and losing control of their vehicles. We don't want to lose control of our, our church. We don't want to lose control of the Marmot Community Church. Uh, we don't want the coronavirus to take it out either. And so those of you that have been faithfully supporting the church with your finances and the mail, uh, God bless you. Those that have stopped by the church and uh, handed me an envelope, God bless you. Amen. For those of you that have come into the church and put money in the church mailbox, God bless you for that. And for those of you that haven't given anything since we stopped having services, please uh, consider uh, to uh, do something a little different. A money order, if you don't have a checking account, cash in the church mailbox would be fine. Uh, call me up, I'll meet you somewhere, and you can hand me uh, your tithe and offering. Uh, we want to keep our church going strong. Amen. When we come back, we want to come back strong. Amen. Uh, so God bless all of you uh, for all of your help. I can't even begin to tell you how much I've been missing you, each and every one of you here uh, this morning. Well, I need to get into the word of the Lord. And uh, so Brother Conkle may be moving a little slower than some of the other churches in the area. Uh, but I'm doing it because I feel like it. I want to see what's happening once they gather. And once they gather, and they don't seem to have a hot spot or any problems that arise, then it will make me feel more comfortable about uh, all of us getting together. I'm so excited about it. Amen. Well, let's go to Proverbs chapter 12 and read verse 25 here this morning. We're going to talk about heaviness of the heart. Heaviness in the heart of a person maketh them to stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. So when your heart is heavy, and of course my heart is heavy today, and when your heart is heavy, it causes you to kind of stoop down. Uh, and we're going to be talking about a lady today that had a problem, and she was permanently bent over, and she could in no wise raise herself up. Amen. And for that basis for the scripture, we're going to go now to Luke chapter 13, and we're going to read verses 10 through 17. Luke chapter 13 verses 10 through 17. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together 
and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work, in them, therefore, come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath day loose his ox or his donkey from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. Uh, I'll tell you, it's a sad day when people are start complaining about somebody getting healed on the Sabbath. Amen. So as we take a look at this particular woman, uh, she walked around for eighteen years. And she was just simply stooped over. I mean, bent over. She could not, the Bible says, in no wise rise herself up. Amen. And that's kind of where we are. We're bent over. Amen. And uh, with this uh, coronavirus, it's caused a lot of problems for us. And we're stooped over. And we can't uh, stand up all right yet. But uh, just wait till Jesus comes along and things are going to get better. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He's going to accomplish what he wanted to accomplish in this pandemic. And then uh, he's going to bring the church back to where it needs to be. Amen. Heaviness in the heart of a person maketh it stoop. But a good word maketh it glad. Amen. Uh, Jesus will help us in our infirmities. And I'm so glad uh, to know that. Helplessness is not one of uh, our favorite uh, positions to find ourselves in, in life. However, all of us find ourselves in situations that we come to understand that we are helpless. I remember uh, several years ago uh, when my wife was having Kevin, our firstborn, uh, when she went through the doors to have that baby delivered and uh, she was... Uh, uh, making a little noise, to say the least, and was hurting in great pain. I felt helpless. I mean, what can a, a, a husband and a, a potential father do at that time? Helpless. Praise God. Now, this woman, she found herself in a horrible physical situation, and she had been there for 18 years. Uh, the physicians in their day could uh, no wise help her. And she could not help herself. The doctors couldn't help her. She couldn't help herself. Her neighbors couldn't help her. Nobody could help her to straighten up her back. Sometimes we go to doctors. They do everything that they can possibly do. But yet it takes the great physician. Amen. To step in and heal you and deliver you from whatever ails you by the power of the Holy Ghost that's inside of each and every one of the spirit-filled believers. Hallelujah. Some people no doubt laughed at her. Saw her all stooped over and all bent over and made fun of her. Probably every day someone laughed or giggled and said, wouldn't it be sad to be like that? Isn't she a sad sight for sore eyes? Think about this for a minute. She had it for 18 years, which would be 365 days per year. Uh, for 18 years, if you multiply that out, that's 6,570 days. 6,570 days 
she had to deal with uh, being stooped over and not able to straighten up her back. That'd be like reaching over to pick up a bucket of water and that's the way you were the rest of your, for 18 years. You just were stuck in that bent over position. Very embarrassing, very embarrassing. Her suffering was just about over though because she was just about ready to find Jesus. All right, Jesus is teaching in the synagogue on the Sabbath. So it was on a Saturday, the Jewish Sabbath. And uh, as he was uh, teaching on the Sabbath day, which is what Jews do. Now the Gentile church or the Christian church, uh, we uh, honor every day as being holy. Every day is holy unto the Lord. And uh, the day that the early church met together was the first day of the week. They call that the Lord's day. That's the day that he rose from the dead. And the Jews met uh, for their study of the law, and for the things under the law. They met on the Sabbath. But Christians uh, met uh, on the Sabbath sometimes, but many times and most of the times, uh, they met on uh, the Lord's Day, which would be on Sunday. And if you look at some of the New Testament uh, teachings, when Paul was talking about uh, gathering up money for the poor folks in Jerusalem, he said on the Lord's Day, when you come together, that'd be Sunday, uh, you know, when you come to hear the Word of God and you give your tithing and offering uh, to the church of the living God, you know, that's uh, when you should bring your uh, free will offering uh, to the Lord. Amen. So, as Christians, we do not observe the Jewish Sabbath in, in such a way as they did. I do believe that everybody should rest one day in the week, and Christians have pretty much chosen that on Sunday is going to be uh, their uh, day of rest. So this woman uh, was, uh, had the spirit of an infirmity for 18 years, 6,570 days, she was bowed together and could not lift herself up. Praise God. Jesus saw her. I want to think about that for a minute. Jesus came to church and there was a big crowd there. But he saw somebody that was hurting. Most people were sitting erect in their seats. But she was stooped over because she could not uh, upright herself. Jesus sees you with what is going on with you that's not normal. Praise God. But the Terry, he sees all the problems you have uh, with your body. Amen. Sister Nancy Ann, he sees the problems. Brother Bill Cordell, uh, Sister uh, uh, Virginia Keeney, amen. God sees what's going on in our bodies. He knows what's going on in our bodies. And he sees what's going on in our minds. And he knows what's going on in our finances. Amen. He knows what's going on in every area of our lives. Jesus saw her. And he knew that the most important thing to her in today's service uh, at the synagogue was to get healed. He focused on her. God wants to focus on you. Amen. He wants to focus on what's wrong with you. He wants to let you know that he cares about you. And he wants to fix you and your problem. Whether it be loneliness. Uh, whether it be heartaches. Whether it be family problems, it doesn't matter what it is. God wants to focus on your problem and he wants to help you uh, by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Holy One of Israel. Praise God. What's sad, as he said to her, he walked over and, you know, you're loosed from your infirmity. And immediately her back loosened up and she straightened up her back. And no doubt she was rejoicing, no doubt shouting, no doubt happy. I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. I can walk uprightly, I can stand uprightly, I can lift up my body, my upper torso. I can lift it up, I can stand straight and tall, amen. And uh, while she was rejoicing, unfortunately the Jewish people did not like the power that comes with the, uh, the, the wonderful Lord Jesus Christ, their Messiah. They did not like the fact 
that this man was claiming to be the Son of God. He was claiming to be their Messiah. And he was actually working signs, wonders, and miracles that none of them could do. And listen, the Jews can't do any miracles and signs and wonders even today. Because they have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Praise God, they have denied him. And they allowed him to be crucified. They crucified their own Messiah. And yet now they're still waiting on their Messiah. Amen. I got news for them. He's not coming back until they say, blessed is he that came in the name of the Lord. Amen. He's not going to come back and help them until they admit that he was the Messiah. No more lies, Jewish people. No more tales and tall tales about him being snuck away in the night. Or it was an imposter that was put in the tomb. Amen. That's what the Muslims say. That it was an imposter that was put in the tomb. And then Jesus suddenly appeared alive later. Oh, what a farce. What fake news that is. Amen. What an evil report they brought upon our Lord and Savior. Amen. But uh, even while somebody was being healed of a horrible infirmity that they had for 18 years. Those with a bad spirit. Those with a bad attitude. Those with a wrong attitude. Amen. They developed a hatred in their heart for Jesus Christ and for his followers. You know, when you have a good leader, the opposite side hates the leader. But really, what they are saying is they hate everyone that loves that particular leader. Amen. And things were no different then. They hated Jesus without a cause. Well, what did he do? He rose people from the dead. He healed people that were lame. People that couldn't speak, he caused them to speak. People that couldn't see, he caused them to see. Amen. He did many marvelous things. A multiplied fish and multiplied bread. Uh, just a few pieces of, of bread and just a few little fishes. Amen. And fed 25,000 people at one time, including the men, women, and children. Amen. And they despised his power. Amen. Many people don't like the power that we have in the apostolic Pentecostal church. But I got news for you. Amen. The power continues on. We have healing power. We have glory power. Amen. We have a lot of power in uh, the apostolic Pentecostal church. Amen. And I thank God that Jesus saw this woman. And I thank God that he took care of her needs. And I thank God that he healed her. And I thank God uh, that he did marvelous things for her. But in the midst of all that, the Jews were crying out. It's not right to heal somebody on the Sabbath. They should have been resting. If you're a healer, you should rest on the Sabbath. And I can imagine Jesus being very irritated with them. And he said, you have donkeys, you have oxen at your house and on your farms when you go home. From this uh, Jewish uh, synagogue. And you're going to go out and you're going to water that ox. And you're going to lead him to the water. And you're going to lead him, uh, that donkey, over to the water. So that they can uh, get a drink. So that they can sustain their life. And you don't care about an eight woman who has and had an infirmity for 18 years. You don't care about that. All you care about is what you can get out of these people. You don't care about the people. It's usually all about money and power and control. Amen. I thank God we have a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And in the church, we have Jesus Christ as our high priest. Amen. There is no hope with the Pope. Amen. Jesus Christ is the new high priest. The Jewish priests, they're gone. The law, it's gone. Amen. God replaced it with something so much better. It's called the church age. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the prominent, uh, prominent item that you will find in the New Testament church. It's the last thing that Jesus told them. He said, go to Jerusalem and tarry until you be endued with power from on high. What is it? It's the wonderful works of God. What is it? The baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. What is it? It's the very message that's preached at this church. The same thing that was preached over 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem. Amen. And we are still teaching it here at the Marmot Community Church. So they complained about the healing. 
And Jesus rebuked them for their bad spirit and their wrong attitude. But were they ashamed? I doubt it. The people rejoiced at all the glorious things that were done by him. Praise God. This is not the only thing that was done by Jesus in that synagogue on that day. Amen. I believe there were other signs and wonders and miracles. Things that happened to people. Uh, right while this woman was being healed. No doubt others were being healed. I've noticed in our church. Praise God. We pray for one person. They get healed. Uh, they get the Holy Ghost. Another person over here all of a sudden will break out speaking in other tongues. Somebody over here will be healed. Somebody over here will feel the joy and the power of God. They'll begin to run and leap and dance. Uh, run around the church. Praise God. Begin to worship and cry and magnify uh, the living God. Hallelujah. This woman couldn't help herself. But she came to the house of God. Amen. That's what the devil doesn't want us to do. This coronavirus is trying to keep us away from assembling together. But I've got a feeling uh, that America and the world and the earth is tired of the devil's oppression. Amen. I believe that by faith in Jesus Christ and through repentance uh, for what uh, other people have been doing wrong. Amen. That caused this horrible thing to come upon us. Amen. Uh, we can overcome church and we will. Praise God. As we close today, there's no doubt people listening today which have suffered physical ailments and some of them for a long time and it leaves them feeling helpless. Praise God. I've got news for you today. Those that have been sick for a long time. Amen. Jesus Christ is still in the healing business and he's going to heal you today. If you'll reach out to him. Amen. I believe this message will bring healing in the homes of those that listen here today. If you've been sick for a long time and you feel helpless and hopeless and, and there's just no hope for you and that you're not going to get healed. Uh, just remember that uh, Jesus is an on time God and he comes just in time. He may not come when you want him to. But he'll be there right on time because he is an on-time God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Praise God. There are no doubt people that are listening today who are carrying heavy loads. Amen. Uh, sometimes the burdens of life can be heavy. This epidemic and this pandemic that we've got going on, this pathetic, ridiculous uh, thing that the devil and other countries have released on the world, it's a shame and a disgrace. But it has become such a heavy load unto the world and to the earth. But I want you to know uh, that if you're listening today and you're carrying a heavy burden and you're carrying a heavy load, it could be about your fi family situations. There's things going on in your family that scare you. There's things going on in your family that worry you. Your children are lost. Your children don't seem to have any uh, much of an interest in God. But I want you to know, amen, when it seems like they don't have an interest in God, keep praying, keep believing, because Jesus is going uh, uh, down the road and he is headed for their place. He wants to go to work on them and he's been working on them for a long time. In this particular case today, he's been working on uh, those people for 18 years. But one day it all ended. 18 years of Jesus Christ wanting to heal this woman that was stooped over happened in one day, in one moment, in one second, in one moment of time. Amen. She believed. He gave, spoke the word. Amen. The word is being spoken today. If you're in a bad situation, just expect God to fix it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. There are no doubt people listening today. Amen. That have a need to really get saved. Amen. They've had a touch of God. They believe that Jesus died on the cross for them and for all of the world. But they've really never taken that cross to the full effect that God would have them to do. They really want to be saved. And maybe for many, many years they thought, I'd like to go to an apostolic Pentecostal church. 
I'd like to just go there. I'd like to just go there and feel the power uh, that I feel on uh, when I'm around some of those apostolic Pentecostal pe people out there in the public. When I see them worshiping and praising God amongst themselves and glorifying God and getting excited about the healings, the signs, and the wonders that are going on in their church, they're probably wondering, what's wrong with my church? How, do, how come I don't see uh, things happening like uh, happened in the book of Acts in my church? Praise God. I want you to know, you have to believe the message of the book of Acts as doctrine and as church history before you will receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's not just a story. It's a reality. Praise God. If you are hungry and you're hunkered down and you feel like you're in bondage in a false religion or in a religion that doesn't teach about the miracles and signs and wonders that God can do in your life. Amen. Today would be a good day to step out of the world and step into an apostolic Pentecostal church where you can find the truth preached. Amen. Praise God. There's no doubt today people out there in my audience who have mental and psychological problems. Amen. Uh, one of these days I'll preach a message to you. Amen. My father had schizophrenia. And he had several problems with mental problems which I dealt with almost all of my life. Growing up I grew up without a dad. And because he was in a mental hospital. But there are no doubt people out there today. Women whose husband is in a mental institution like my mother. Uh, had a situation like that. Or men that are trying to raise their children while uh, their wife is in a mental institution. Perhaps she burnt her brain out on drugs, whatever the problem may be. Amen. That uh, you can burn your uh, brain out on drugs and Jesus Christ, you could be in that condition for 18 years and Jesus Christ could come back and he could heal you instantaneously if you just reach out to God and believe God. Amen. He can heal mental disorders. Amen. He can give you a sound mind. And return you to the normal world. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you have any of these problems. Amen. If you have physical ailments. Or bad family situations. Or you really don't feel like you're saved like you'd like to be. Praise God. You have mental problems. Uh, maybe you're on. So many uh, people in America are on. Uh, Clodopins or. Uh, Xanax or Valium or some other thing. That they're on and they depend on those things. Uh, all the time, every day, each and every day of their life. You don't have to depend on that stuff. Amen. If you can just look to the Lord. Now, there's not, no sin in some of those things. I'm not saying there's sin in it. I'm just saying that God can deliver you from the need of those drugs if you so choose. Because He is the mighty God. Someone has stooped over for 18 years and could no wise lift himself up. Amen. If God can do that in a moment, he can do the same thing for you here today. Praise God. Don't worry. Don't fret. Just because you don't have victory yet. Jesus is coming down the dusty road. And he's willing and able to help the helpless. Praise God. Just remember when you feel helpless and you feel like you're stooped over and you can't get back up and you can't help yourself just remember that Jesus is there there's a song we used to sing standing somewhere in the shadows you find Jesus praise God if you need healing come to the house of God amen that's where this woman got her healing right there in the house of God Jesus meets with us uh, every week when we come here, a couple times a week, he meets with us. Two or three times a week, we, we gather here. Uh, uh, and, and under normal circumstances, we gather two or three times a week. And when we get here, amen, Jesus Christ is in our midst. Amen. And when Jesus Christ is in your midst, everything good happens. Praise God. You can be healed of dementia. You can be healed of cancer. You can be healed of mental problems. Amen. You can heal, be healed of emotional problems. You may be, your emotions may be really, really on edge. Maybe have panic attacks all, uh, all the time, off and on. But God can deliver you from all those things 
in a moment. Just remember this woman. 18 years. Thousands of days. She suffered with not being able to help herself. Amen. But then Jesus came along. And he helped her. See she was in the house of God. She knew a little bit about God. But she hadn't got her healing yet. She hadn't got what she wanted from Jesus yet. Don't get discouraged. Just hang on. Uh, God is not through with you. Uh, sometimes he lets us suffer for a little while. And then he comes on the scene and fixes us. God bless you. It was good to have you here today. Amen. I hope that somebody hears this today. And they will take Jesus at his word. Find a place to go in your home. Kneel down. Don't be afraid to cry. Reach out to God and say, God, I've put up with this as long as I can do it. I can't put up with it anymore. Jesus, help me, God. Help me, God. I need your help. Praise God. If you cry out to him today, he'll help you. Go to your altar that you have at home, by your bedside, on the couch, fall on the floor, wherever you want to go. Cry out to the Lord. And, and he said, cry unto me and I will answer thee. Praise God. And he will heal you. The Lord Jesus. He will heal you. God bless you. And we'll see you next time. In Jesus' name. Hello, MCC. We love and miss every one of you, and we can't wait for... Um, the 31st where we can all gather again. I wanted to read a scripture to you, James 5, I mean, sorry, James 4, 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. We are to walk in humility and we certainly are at this time. But humility means being thankful um, no matter what comes our way. Uh, we must humbly raise our hands and thank him that we know that all things work for our good. Whether it be a virus, whether it be a disturbance in our homes, in our lives, whether it be anything you're going through, we still must raise our hands and say, thank you, Jesus, because we need to walk humbly. And when we feel lonely for each other, then what we do is we take that loneliness and we thank God for it anyway. And if you're not lonely, then use that to encourage somebody that is lonely. So we can use all things that we go through that way. I'd like to ask you all to celebrate Kelsey Conkle's graduation. We were going to have a nice graduation party, um, but due to many circumstances, it's not going to happen. We were going to have a nice one with the MCC family and with some of her friends but it's not going to happen. So I would like for all of you to at least send her a graduation card. It would mean so much to her. She loves each and every one of you so much. She's a good girl. She loves God. She talks about God everywhere she goes. She's overcome so much. You all wouldn't even hardly know how much she's overcome. And she serves Jesus with a great attitude. And if you don't know our address, it's 8805 McCorkle Avenue, Marmette 25315. And just a card would mean so much to her. She'll keep them because you are precious to her. And I'm asking you this because it will help her celebrate her senior graduation. I thank you all very much for your patience while we're trying to get back to church like we know church. And I love you all and God bless you all. Keep smiling, keep praising. Things are going to get better. Most of all, Jesus is coming. We're closer now than we've ever been. And it's just a little while. And we'll, he'll be here.